ladies and gentlemen, before we um, start tonight's AEW review from Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, we gotta talk about something <coughs> very serious that is going on around the world right now. Um, you guys know what this disease is very effective the coronavirus I'm sitting here shaking while I'm talking about this by the way you can see my hand right there I'm literally shaking at first as early as yesterday I I thought this was all hype I thought that people were being overhyped about it just like a few other things that they're overhyped about. And I thought we wouldn't be fine. But, I mean, after what has transpired today, we have an empty crowd. Oh, God. We have an empty crowd at March uh, in the March Madness tournament. Um, the Golden State Warriors are going to be playing their home games. Uh, not even that anymore. The NBA has suspended the entire season because um, Rudy Gobert from the Utah Jazz was diagnosed with the coronavirus before tonight's game. It was broken by... Adrian Wojnarowski, uh, NBA journalist, that the NBA is shutting, is suspending the rest of the season because Rudy Gobert has diagnosed with coronavirus and he came back with positive tests, and this is really taking over the world. It's, uh, it's upsetting. It's very upsetting. Um, this is a a very serious situation that's going on in the world. People are affecting, affected by it. They have suspended the NBA season. March Madness is playing in empty arenas. Who knows? That that could be that could be canceled as soon as tomorrow, probably. Um, WWE is moving SmackDown Friday night to the Performance Center and more than likely Wrestlemania is going to get cancelled this year this disease has taken over the world and it's going to be taking over the world for the next few months I think sooner rather than later uh, probably my school is going to get shut down. All uh, Lots of schools here in New Jersey have gotten shut down. My brother's school hasn't gotten shut down yet. But I'm pretty sure I'm getting shut down. And he's getting shut down. And my mother's a counselor. And I'm pretty sure she's getting shut down as well. Uh, I'm in a loss for words today. Today has been such a crazy day it's such a crazy day we're gonna get we're gonna get through tonight's review and then I'm gonna go off to bed and get ready for school tomorrow and I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna be talking about this but tonight's deep breaths real quick Tonight's show from Utah was a really good show. I thought tonight's show was actually awesome. From the new storylines that we've gotten to the build at Blood and Guts, where we get the Elite versus the Inner Circle. The build 
It has um, the build has been really good for blood, blood and guts, and I'm really excuse me. <coughs> the build for blood and guts has been really good. Has been really good so far. Um, got some great in ring action tonight as well. Before I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go right into the review, man. I wanna go right into this review. I just waste. I just talked about coronavirus for about five and a half minutes now. So without, uh, before we start the review, you guys know what to do. If you haven't checked out last week's Elimination Chamber vlog, go check that out. I had a hell of a time at Elimination Chamber last week. Um, lost my voice at the show. Saw really good wrestling matches, and I had a great time. So if you did not check it out already, go check out the Elimination Chamber vlog right here on the Big Fight Field channel. Let's start off talking about Cody versus Ortiz. So this is very in the beginning of the match where Cody and Ortiz were doing their lockups and exchanges. And then all of a sudden, you see the crowd look over to the left where Jake the Snake Roberts is walking out into the crowd along with Lance Archer. So, Jake Roberts said last week that he was bringing his client to AEW. His client is Lance Archer. Uh, we'll talk about this after I talk about the match with Cody and Ortiz. But the match was very good with C Cody and Ortiz. Very nice back and forth offenses. We got some arguments between Santana and Arn Anderson with Brandy. Brandy actually whipped her belt. Uh, onto Santana of the inner circle and that's what kind of got him hurt and then the story uh, for this match was Cody's knee Ortiz kept attacking the knee of Cody beating it up and then Cody would make the big baby face comeback and he would attack Ortiz's knee and um, and then um, disaster kick Ortiz kicked out uh, Cody put in the figure four, and Ortiz tapped out the figure four. This was a really good match to start off AEW Dynamite. Uh, I was really looking forward to this match. I feel like Cody really needed this one after the loss to MJF. And this was a really big match for Cody. Uh, his first match since that loss to MJF, and he needed to get back on track. Meanwhile, uh, Lance Archer, um, he wanted to get in the ring and fight Cody. But Jake Roberts was holding him back and said, no, no, don't go in the ring. And he's got other plans um, for the future. This pairing between Jake Roberts and Lance Archer. I know I said last week that it, was gonna, it, should, it should be Brody Lee. Because Lance Archer isn't bad on the microphone. But. It makes perfect sense. Jake Roberts and Lance Archer together. They look legit. They look intense. And. They look like they're going to take care of business. Lance Archer is a freaking giant man. He is a giant Standing next to Jake the Snake Roberts. He looks legit. He is a main eventer already in AEW. With his first... He hasn't even had a match yet. And he's already in the main event scene. Without even having a match. That's how effective having Jake the Snake Roberts standing by his side is. And we are more than likely going to get a program between Cody and Lance Archer. And I think that match is going to happen at double or nothing. Very good seg a very good match to start off the show with Cody and Ortiz. Satlander, uh, Chris Satlander and Hikaru Shida versus Nyla Rose and Bea Priestley. 
this was a really good women's tag match. All of the ladies got their stuff in. Uh, Sheeta, she's probably the best wrestler on that women's roster in AEW. She's, you know, she's intense. She's legit. I like at her car as Sheeta, and I look at her as a top contender uh, for Nyla Rose's championship, but we'll get to that. After the match, uh, no, before, uh, the closing sequence of the match was Nyla was holding up Hikaru Shida. B Priestley was going to go for a move. Chris Statlander uh, pushed B. Um, Shida went for a move. I don't know what it was. But then Rose, Nyla Rose reversed it, did the sit-out powerbomb, and Nyla Rose pinned the number one contender, um, Hikaru Shida. So she is going to drop in the rankings. And then after the match, her own tag team partner, Bea Priestley, um, attacks Nyla, Nyla Rose. She holds up the Women's Championship and she throws the title at Nyla Rose. Very big um, uh, segment right there. As you know, I'm on Twitter right now and talking. I can do both at the same time. Yes. Um. God, this really go bad. It's just making me. I don't know, man. Back to the review, but I'm totally into Nyla Rose and B Priestley going at it for. The women's championship. I miss B Priestley. I really liked her program that she had with Britt Baker. I think she should have came out victorious in that program. Uh, I'm turning my phone off until I've done this review. And I think she can have a very good match with Nyla Rose. And I would not mind to see at all B Priestley be the AEW women's champion. Not I. I would have no problems with that, at all. After this, Christopher Daniels cut a very hilarious video package of him acting like Evil Uno, cutting a promo. He's saying that the Dark Order were very legit and were undefeated when they first came into AEW. And then they faced SCU, and they took the L. And then said after that loss to SCU, they started doing, you know, promo packages, recruiting, and getting an exalted one. And it was eventually feel, uh, revealed that next week... The Exalted One is going to be revealed. And next week's location is in Rochester, New York. And guess who lives in Rochester, New York? Mr. Brody Lee himself. So Brody Lee is more than likely going to be the Exalted One. Not Matt Hardy. He then challenges both Stu Grayson and Evil Uno to individual one-on-one -on -one matches. So, maybe we'll get one of the matches next week. We'll have to wait and see. This was a very good uh, promo package and very funny as well. My personal match tonight. Butcher, Blade, and MJF versus... The Jurassic Express. This was awesome. This was a awesome six-man tag team match. We had MJF in the beginning face-to-face -to -face with Marco Stunt. MJF pushes Marco Stunt. First of all, before that, MJF's entrance, he added, I'm better than you and you know it. To his theme song. I freaking love it man. I absolutely love it. He's amazing. 
And then MJF pushes Marco's stunt, poses to the crowd. He bumps into Luchasaurus and gets attacked by Luchasaurus. Later on, uh, MJF, the Butcher and the Blade, they take out Luchasaurus. They go after the knee of Luchasaurus. Uh, nice ground and pound offense. I haven't seen Luchasaurus be beaten down like this in a while. It's usually Marco Stunt who's getting beaten up or Jungle Boy who's getting beaten up and then Luchasaurus comes in and makes the hot tag. But here, here here's a very cool spot. So we got um, MJF Holding down MJ, uh, Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus stands up. The blade wraps around the other ankle of Luchasaurus. And Luchasaurus is walking with both MJF and the blade holding on to his ankles. And it's very... It's just, it's moments like this is going to get Luchasaurus even more over than he is. But he's he's more he's one of the most over wrestlers on the entire roster right now. How can you not love this guy? Then Luchasaurus makes the tag to Jungle Boy. He comes in as a house of fire. Attacks the blade, attacks MJF, attacks the butcher. And then we get to this. <coughs> Well, actually, Luchasaurus comes in first. He attacks MJF, the Butch, and the Blade. And then we get a face-off between Luchasaurus and the Butcher. And man, this was one of the best parts of the entire show. We got... These two big bulls. They're like huge guy gigantic bulls just going at each other like that freaking intense there's a lot of big man matchups we've seen Luchasaurus got into an AEW but if they were to book a one on one match with Luchasaurus in the near future I would not mind seeing Luchasaurus versus the Butcher in fact I would book that I would book that on this episode of Dynamite. That could be something really good. Because the freaking Butcher is underrated, man. His look is so... His, his look is so unique. The Butcher and the Blade look unique. I, f I just feel like... They always win six-man tag matches against MJF. Well, I, I'm see. I'm getting so out of place right here. Let me let me talk about the finish. So Marco Stone tags himself in. Um, he attacks MJF. He keeps stomping down on MJF. Aubrey Edwards pulls Marco Stone away. He calms down. He goes back and he stomps on MJF. Jungle Boy push uh, drags him away. Marco Stone pushes him. And then Ali gets on the apron as Jungle Boy's on the top rope. The blade pushes pushes um Marco uh Jungle Boy. MJF does the arm bar to Marco Stunt. And Marco Stunt taps out. So MJF the butcher and the blade uh get a victory over Jurassic Express in a uh great six man tag match. This was my favorite match of the night. Now let's talk about the Butcher and the Blade. They always win their multi-man matches, uh, their trio matches when they're teamed up with MJF. Okay, cool. MJF is undefeated in AEW. They're so unique, these guys. They're teamed up with Allie. They got badass entrance music. They come out to Pyro. And the but these guys look so freaking unique. The one problem is 
they always lose. They always freaking lose. And I feel like, you know, by the way they looked, and they get Pyro, and they're teaming up with MJF. You know, these guys could get some wins, man. I look at uh, I look at the Butcher and the Blade, and they could be tag team champions. No doubt. No doubt. I think, I look at Butcher and the Blade, I look as a top team in AEW. When these guys first came in, I had a negative reaction. Because I, I did not know who they were. And they attacked Cody, and the segment was very flat. And the more I watched them, the more I liked them. It's like when you try something new to eat. You don't like it at first. But the more you have it, the more you like it. And the more you're going to eat that food. That's how I feel about the Butcher and the Bleed. And I definitely want to see more of them on TNT. MJF, I feel like he's done with his feud for Co with Cody. For now. They will revisit that. But Cody... Is doing his stuff with the inner circle and Lance Archer. The way they're booking MJF, they keep mentioning that he's undefeated. He's going to be the next. He's going to be the next challenger for John Moxley. And I have a feeling that match is going to happen at double or nothing. And, you know. That, that's going to be awesome. The promos that MJF and Moxley are going to have is going to be classics. But AEW is going to back themselves up in the corner here. Because you got MJF who's undefeated. He's this hated heel who nobody, at, at, nobody likes him at all. They hate him with their guts. And they would be sick to their stomachs. If MJF was the world champion. And that would get MJF more heat. But then that would have John Moxley. <coughs> but then that would have John Moxley. Come off. As a transitional champion. And we've built him up. Ever since he showed up in Vegas last year. Just to be a transitional champion. I don't really like that for John Moxley. Which is kind of why they backed themselves up in the corner. But we'll see what happens. I mean, if MJF and Moxley happens at double or nothing, that's money. That matches money. Joey Janela and the Private Party. Versus the Death Triangle. I gotta skip the Britt Baker. Big Swole segment. Uh, just to save time. But. That was a great segment. With. Britt Baker saying that. Her boyfriend's the only. Wrestler that people talk about. And then Big Swole says. I'm actually married. Bay Bay. <coughs> That was awesome. That was awesome. But we got Joey Janela in Private Party versus Death Triangle. Pack and the Lucha Brothers. Really good six-man tag match here. Pack. I don't even remember. I don't remember what happened during the match. Because I think this was the part where they were breaking that um, the NBA... Season was suspended, so I probably didn't pay attention to the match. But I saw the ending of uh, Package Power Driver into the, the double stomp. And then the Black Arrow. And then they attacked him after the match, and the best friends came out. I saw that part, but I didn't see the match. Probably, I'm probably going to have to go back and watch the match. But, uh, Death Triangle win. And we're getting Lucha Brothers versus Best Friends next week in Rochester. That should be good shit. 
before we get to the main event, this was funny as well. Sean Spears is looking for a tag team partner, and they're looking worldwide for any wrestler in the world, any podcast. They're going to fans. They're letting fans submit their cases for them being Sean Spears' tag team partner. I love it. <laughs> God, I could be Sean Spears' tag team partner. Put me in, man. Put me in. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, <coughs> I'm reliable. I won't turn your, my back on you. <laughs> oh, boy. They had Simon Miller on AEW Dynamite tonight. I popped. I popped for Simon Miller. Yes, that's Simon Miller. Why? He showed up on Dynamite tonight. I absolutely popped. Oh, he's the only reason I watch what culture. Sorry, but I kind of buried what culture right there. Main event, the inner circles, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara versus Adam Hangman Page and Dustin Rhodes. Now, just as a statistic stat, uh, this was the same main event as week two of AEW Dynamite in Boston. I did not forget that. I'm just throwing it out there. But this wasn't really about the match. I mean, the match was decent for what it was, I guess. Nothing special happened. But at the end, we got Hangman doing a moonsault onto Santana Ortiz and Jake Hager on the outside. Uh, Dustin Rhodes doing a dive to Chris Jericho to Sammy Guevara. Dustin Rhodes, uh, Canadian Destroyer, to Sammy Guevara into a buckshot lariat. And Hangman and Dustin Rhodes got the win. But then after the match, <coughs> the inner circle attack Hangman and Dustin. Kenny Omega comes out. He tries to fight them off. And then Cody comes out. He's fighting them off. Takes out Ortiz. Takes out Santana. And then gets a gut wrench from Jake Hager. So Jake Hager takes out Cody, and he throws Cody to the outside. They're like, we're done with this guy. Then they drag Adam Hangman Page up to the ramp. They drag him up. He's laying there, and, you know, they drag him up. He's laying there. They're going to do the, the power bomb they did last week. Looks like they're going to do it. Out comes Matt Jackson. Yes, Matt Jackson comes out and saves Adam Hangman Page. He takes out Jericho, takes out Sammy, gives Santana and Ortiz a super kick. The inner circle's all laid out. And then Matt Jackson gives Adam Hangman Page the finger. The good old middle finger. And then out of nowhere, Chris Jericho smacks the shit out of Matt Jackson with a steel chair over the head. And I mean, he smacked the shit out of Matt Jackson. And he did the same thing to Hangman. And the inner circle stand up. And they do the middle finger pose. That's the way Dynamite goes off the air. This was an awesome, awesome episode of AEW Dynamite from Salt Lake City, Utah. Blood and Guts is in two weeks. I wish I was going. I'm not going. Can't find myself a ride. But that's okay. I'll be at the show in Philly on April 22nd. That is my that is my AEW Dynamite review. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to the Big Fight Feel channel. I 
guess... <coughs> I guess with this coronavirus going around, I'm going to be getting shut down from school. I'll have to do online work. Well, that means there's going to be more videos here on the channel, so that's the good thing. You guys are going to get more content if I'm home from school for, for, for the coronavirus. Comment down below what you thought of this episode of AEW Dynamite tonight. Like this video with a super kick. Share this video on Twitter with your friends. Follow me on Twitter, at Joseph Conlon. Follow... My good enemy, Eddie Mullen on Twitter. And I'll probably see you guys tomorrow for your NXT review. I shouldn't have school on Friday, but I, I will. I probably will. I'll, I'll, I'll be here tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I, I might have studying to do, but I, I promise you guys. Fingers crossed. I will be here tomorrow. I promise you. Have a good night.